Why do people put GFCI receptacles all over the place? So GFCI protection is something in code. It was something that was um, developed a long time ago, but the expansion of where it's required is like ever expanding with each new code cycle. So if you're in a house, for instance, there's a whole bunch of places where you have to have ground fault circuit interrupter protection, GFCI protection. There's a thing called GFI protection too, ground fault interrupter, um, but a ground fault circuit interrupter is more specifically either a breaker or it's a receptacle that if there is a ground fault, meaning if a hot conductor touches something metal around electrical equipment, that's what we call a ground fault. And it's faulted to ground on the ground conductor or the equipment grounding conductor. They're actually called GFCI devices for personnel, it's protection for personnel for people. So if somebody's standing in like a, a puddle of water and they go to try to plug something in, there's a higher risk of them getting seriously injured. So this device is something that very, very quickly within milliseconds, boom, is able to disconnect the incoming conductors that are going to the receptacle and separate them for the outgoing conductors or from the actual load side of the device itself. So what does code actually say about putting GFCI receptacles in? Now there's a lot of different parts of uh, code. You gotta realize it depends on what environment you're in. So the way that the NEC is laid out is it separates based off of like if you're in a dwelling unit where people are living because they're gonna be using the space way differently than people that are in like a bank conducting commerce doing business. So uh, we're gonna be in 210.8 ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. Now, one thing to uh, notice with GFCIs is it's receptacles. It's places where people are plugging in and taking things out. It's not light switches. There is one place in here where that talks about it actually in a uh, crawl space lighting outlet, but most GFCI protection is not for lighting because lighting is way up there. We're way down here and we're not going to be like likely energizing something while standing in some water and a ground fault occur from something that's up there. So it's usually something we're plugging in and we're using and unplugging. So what does it say? 210.8 ground fault circuit interrupter protection. Class A GFCI shall be protected in accordance with 210.8 A through F. So A specifically is dwelling units. That's anywhere you dwell, anywhere you live. Um, so that's really what we're gonna focus on for this because most people that are watching this right now are either electricians or homeowners. <laughs> They're trying to figure out where they need to put in GFIs for an inspection. So within dwelling units specifically, it says all 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles installed in the following locations and supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. So receptacles, not lighting, but also not the entire branch circuit. It says all 125 through 250 volt receptacles in these locations. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when we start talking about arc fault protection, we're talking about the entire branch circuit. We're not talking about the receptacle. That's why I bring that up because a lot of people get confused with GFCI and AFCI. And it's like, don't the, don't, doesn't the whole circuit have to be protected if it's GFCI? It's like, no, it's the point of contact that somebody might actually introduce their finger into a prong while they're plugging something in. So what it says for dwelling units, we've got receptacles in bathrooms. Number two, receptacles in garages and also accessory buildings that have a floor located at or below grade level, not intended as habitable rooms and limited to storage areas, work areas, and areas of similar use. So places people are probably gonna be plugging extension cords in and, and stuff that's not like actual a room where somebody's living. Next, number three is receptacles outdoors. So anything outdoors, water, rain, obvious, everything outdoors. Um, receptacles in crawl spaces at or below grade level. So crawl spaces, typically not the same thing as like a basement or something like that. Um, it's usually just a small little space that might have moisture, might have some like wetness, dampness, um, might be like puddles. And then if somebody's crawling through there, there needs to be protection because of that uh, moisture and it's 
specifically at or below grade, right, where water is going to either rest or it's going to find its way down into. Um, receptacles in basements, number five. So same kind of thing, basements collect water. So any receptacles in basements have to be GFCI protected. Uh, receptacles in kitchens, now it's not just specific to countertop receptacles, it's all receptacles in kitchens. Receptacles in areas with sinks and permanent provisions for food preparation, beverage preparation, or cooking. So basically they just kind of expanded the language of what a kitchen is be because people would have like large houses. Like we would do a lot of huge custom homes where they have like a butler's pantry and then they have like a prep area and then they have, you know, like a, a butler's kitchen or a bar or all these different things that were like, well, it's kind of close to the kitchen. Like it shares the same space as the kitchen. So is it still the kitchen? There's still appliances. There's still stuff to make food. So they just kind of expanded the area. So it's anything with permanent provisions for food prep, beverage prep, or cooking. Then there's receptacles near sinks, specifically in number eight, where receptacles are installed within six feet from the top inside edge of the bowl of the sink. So any areas that are not kitchens, if you have like a mop sink somewhere, well, I guess the mop, I mean, a mop sink's still a sink, but like some people put sinks in weird places and, and so it might be like a utility room. Well, a utility room, you still have to have GFCI protection which we'll get into here in a second in 11. I guess if you're just being weird and you put sinks in weird places, <laughs> you just have to read GFCI protect those receptacles. Uh, number nine, receptacles in boat houses. Obviously you're right next to the water. Uh, number 10, receptacles in bathtubs or shower stalls, uh, where receptacles are installed within six feet of the outside edge of the bathtub or the shower stalls. Somebody could step outside of that tub and be soaking wet and trying to plug and unplug stuff. I mean, I guess I've done it. <laughs> like old radios and stuff. I don't know, but it's for dummies like me. Uh, number 11, laundry areas, same thing. Wash machine, leaked water, wet clothes, water, um, any receptacles that are in laundry areas. And then number 12, uh, indoor damp and wet locations. So that kind of covers anything else. Um, and that's gonna be up to the, either the jurisdiction of the AHJ of like who's inspecting, whether or not that really gets um, looked at, like if anybody notices that, um, or a homeowner bucking back against it because a lot of homeowners are gonna be like, they want, most people want less GFCI protection because it's just annoying to have GFCI receptacles trip all of the time. Um, but like if you consider an indoor damp location, like a mud room could be a damp location because it's the first room in the house. And if there's like snow and stuff and you guys have been out like playing and doing, you know, crazy stuff out in the country and you trudge in a whole bunch of mud and water from snowboarding or whatever, like, okay, now it's a damp environment, you know, but it's not always a damp environment. So, all right. So now those are the areas that code for dwelling units for any kind of dwelling unit, for a duplex, for a single family house, for a multifamily house, that's anything you can live in or dwell in. There are a couple of exceptions to this. So exception number one, receptacles that are not readily accessible and are supplied by a branch circuit dedicated to electric snow, melting, de-icing or pipeline and vessel heating equipment shall be permitted to be installed differently. Exception number two, a receptacle supplying only a permanently installed premises security system shall be permitted to omit ground fault circuit interrupter protection because if you have a security system, you don't just want like a GFCI receptacle to trip and then your whole security system goes out. It's like you have to evaluate the risk versus the liability for that one. Exception number three, listed weight supporting ceiling receptacles uh, utilized in combination with compatible weight supporting attached fittings installed for the purpose of supporting a ceiling luminaire or ceiling suspended fan shall be permitted to omit the ground fault circuit interrupter protection. And then exception number four, factory installed receptacles that are not readily accessible and are mounted internally to bathroom exhaust fan assemblies shall not require GFCI protection unless required by the installation's instructions or listing. So this is a funny one, but Inside of most vent fans, you're in a bathroom. Uh, when you open them up, you're gonna see a two-prong receptacle. And it's like the, the motor has this tiny little cord with a receptacle on it because the motor can actually be changed out from the housing. So the housing stays up there. It's got this little receptacle and you take this piece of metal out with the receptacle and there's wires on the back of it. And that's how we wire our wires into 
the back side of that receptacle. We put the receptacle in place and then the motor can stick up inside of that thing. And if it's ever crappy, you just unplug it, pull the motor out, put a new motor in. So that little receptacle became an issue with some people, some inspectors out there being like, well, it's in a bathroom, so it says that it needs to be GFCI protected. It's a receptacle. <laughs> Somebody might get hurt. <laughs> no, nobody's, nobody is going to get hurt on a vent fan in a bathroom. Like, I suppose if it's a if it's a really short room and you could reach up there and pull it down and be working on a vent fan with water on the ground with it being live and the breakers on you're doing all kinds of stupid st this is something that shouldn't need to be in here this is silliness that fan is technically an appliance or a piece of equipment it should just have a breaker or a disconnecting means you shut it off just like any other thing and work on it you're not like nobody's taking the cover off their fan and like unplugging things while standing. Most bathrooms are like eight, nine feet tall. To, like who's t tall enough to do that? I just don't get it. But I had an inspector fail me on a rough inspection because of that. They're like, well, even though this is a 10 foot ceiling in this bathroom, somebody could just come in contact with that. <laughs> I'm like, what? And they're like, well, people leave the, the, the covers off of their fans a lot. I'm like, yeah, but it's 10 feet in the air. I can't even jump that high to try to touch that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Enough people have said that it's a concern that it got put in here. So and we're not gonna look at part B other than dwelling units. Other than dwelling units is like everything else. They're non-dwelling units or other than dwelling units. Now, uh, some things that also other than the other than dwelling units and other than just in receptacles, they have part C of 210.8 crawl space lighting outlets. These are the only mention that they make of lighting outlets at all. But I mean, again, it, like it's probably more that you're in this damp or possibly wet environment crawling around. So like everything around you should be GFCI protected. Um, there's specific appliances that have to be GFCI protected, but most of these are commercial things, like non-dwellings. But you do have dishwashers have to be GFCI protected, electric ranges, wall-mounted ovens, counter mounted cooking units, clothes dryers, and microwave ovens. So they're very specific now in which appliances have to be GFCI protected. And the reason for that is because before we said kitchens, that's just receptacles in kitchens. What if we have things that are direct wired or what if we have things that are not 120 volt, you know, receptacles, they're 250 volt receptacles. So anyways, they put specific appliances to make sure that you get those appliances GFCI protected. Then we have E equipment requiring servicing. It says GFCI protection shall be provided for the receptacles required by 210.63. 210.63 equipments requiring servicing, a 125 volt single phase 15 or 20 amp rated receptacle outlet shall be installed in an accessible location within 25 feet of the equipment as specified in 210.63A and B. So these are called service receptacles. It basically, if you're in an attic somewhere, if you're you know outside, there's air conditioning equipment, you have to have a service receptacle. So if a technician has to come up and mess with that equipment, that within 25 feet of it, you've got some kind of receptacle to work on that equipment. This is just saying that that receptacle has to be GFCI protected, all those receptacles. And then lastly, a little bit more specifically for dwellings, they say for dwellings, all outdoor outlets, other than those covered in 210.8A, exception number one, including outlets installed in the following locations and supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground, 50 amps or less shall be provided with GFCI protection. Uh, number one, garages that have floors located at or below grade level. Number two, accessory buildings. And number three, boat houses. If equipment supplied by an outlet covered under the requirements of this section is replaced, the outlet shall be supplied with GFCI protection. Exception number one, GFCI protection shall not be required on lighting outlets other than those covered in 210.8C for the crawl spaces. And then exception number two, GFCI protection shall not be required for listed HVAC equipment. This exception shall expire September 1st of 2026. So now we're gonna have to put air conditioners on GFCI protection in 2026. Get ready for that. 
So thank you guys so much for your attention. Love you crazy people. And I'll see you in the next one.